This time we're in Germany. Join us for a look around Berlin. We've just flown into Berlin and we're heading into the city by train from the airport. I've never been to Berlin before. First stop, the Brandenburg Gate. This is the Brandenburg Gate, which became the symbol of the division between East and West Berlin. There are a number of memorials around the city for the various groups of people murdered under the Nazi regime, and we will be taking a look at some of them on this trip. This is the Reichstag, the German Parliament building, and we've just got tickets to go up the dome. But not for today. I left it too late to get an online booking for the time we were in Berlin. But luckily, we managed to get tickets for a few days later. We're in the dome of the Reichstag, which is at the top of the German Parliament building. The spiral walkway takes you right up to the top of the dome. Just as a tip, if you want to come up here, register online in advance and register your ID and you'll need to bring your ID with you. And if you just turn up on the day, you're unlikely to get in. Sometimes it's a few days in advance, you may still be able to get some tickets. Far better to book online in advance. Potsdamer Platz, yeah, so that is Potsdamer Platz. Going down. This is our new vlogging truck. Next, we visit the memorial to homosexuals persecuted under the Nazis. A stark reminder of how extreme right wing views can very quickly change the mindset in a country, leading to the persecution of innocent, ordinary human beings who just happen to be in a minority group. Gay people were targeted and made to wear a pink triangle and shipped off to the concentration camps where many met their demise under a barbaric regime. And such actions should never be forgotten. Just across the street is the memorial to the murdered Jews of Europe. 2,711 concrete slabs of different sizes form the memorial covering 19,000 square meters and giving visitors a sobering and unsettling experience. As you wander through the undulating pathways between the blocks, you very quickly find yourself deep inside the structure with the imposing cold grey blocks towering above you. Beneath the monument is a museum with stories from some of those that survived the dreadful experience. At Kochstrasse is the famous Checkpoint Charlie. Worth a quick visit, although some may see it more as a tourist trap, with the opportunity to pay to get your picture taken with a couple of uniformed actors. Here are some of the last remaining sections of the Berlin Wall. The Berlin Wall Museum is free to visit, with many pictures and artefacts on display, and a viewing area on the roof. There is also an open air exhibit to walk around that runs for several blocks. Back at Wittenberg Platz, close to where we are staying, is Kardawi, the second largest department store in Europe after Harrods in London. 
with eight floors and 60,000 square metres of selling space. And just outside is the crazy Fritz & Co currywurst stall. And Chris just couldn't resist getting some German sausage. I left my variable ND filter back in the UK, so I've had to go out and buy a very expensive five-stop ND filter to use here out in Germany. It's way too bright outside in the daylight, so hopefully it'll be better now. This is the East Side Gallery an artistic memorial to the Berlin Wall. These days, it's hard to tell what's East or West Berlin, but the East Side Gallery features more remains of the wall. This section of the wall has been left intact and has now become a canvas for street art and graffiti, with some now very famous pieces. Dummer Platz, you can see the first German traffic lights still working, if only for the tourists. Leading from the Reichstag is Tiergarten, a 520-acre urban park with much to see and many statues and monuments, such as the statues of the classic composers Beethoven, Haydn and Mozart. So I've given up on using Google Maps to find my way around and we found the Amazon statue with Pokemon Go maps. This is Tiergarten, a park originally used for hunting animals, but now it's used for hunting Pokemon. In the middle of the park is the Victory Column. There should be some good views from the top of here. And he's right, the views up here are spectacular. This is the victory column in the middle of the tier garden and it's 67 metres high and we just climbed up to the top. And now it's time for a spree, not shopping, for the boat trip on the River Spree through the heart of Berlin. 368 metres in height, it's the fourth tallest telecommunications tower in the world. East Germany rebuilt the quarter using some of the original building materials. Mind your head. Phew. And of course, no boat trip is complete without the German beer. Cheers. Ich bin ein Berliner. We take the gentle hour-long cruise and get to see some of the main buildings and sites around the city. Channel to the right.
site of the arch bridge is called the Kupfergraben. And eventually, we end up back at Museum Island, where we started. So we take a quick look around the island too. Well, so far everything we've seen in Berlin has been the standard tourist sites, but today we've come out to a place called Spandau to see a citadel or a castle or some such thing. I really don't know anything about it. The only expectation I've got so far is I would expect to see some ballet. The fortress, with its four bastions, was built in the 16th century on the site of an older Slavic settlement and you can see much of the history of the fortress in the commander's house as you enter. The archaeological window has excavations which reveal an ancient Slavic wall made from wood and earth, and a later stone wall dating back many centuries. And like any good museum, it has its fair share of broken pots. The Julius Tower dates back to the beginning of the 13th century. Once the treasury, the tower is protected by thick stone walls and a huge steel door. For the best views, you can climb the 153 steps to the roof. In the dark period from 1935, the citadel was used as a base for the Army's Gas Protection Laboratory, with over 300 scientists and technicians doing research on chemical weapons, which included testing on animals and humans, later leading to the development of the nerve gases used horrifically in the Second World War. We're in the Renaissance fortress of Spandau, which is over 900 years old and is the oldest building in Berlin. The old provisions depot is now a museum, unveiling some of Berlin's former monuments from throughout history, including the monumental head of the statue of Lenin, which was once buried so it would never be seen in public again. And that was an interesting day at Spandau Citadel, and we'd highly recommend it. Back in the city, we hunt out a local bowling centre and throw a few frames. I've got to keep my hand in, otherwise Chris might beat me. We go for a tasty burger and check out some of the local Berlin gay scene. It's just a shame in this day and age that they actually still allow smoking in most of the bars. So that was our time in Berlin and now we're off by train to Hamburg. Pour some crisps for the train. Here you are train. Next time, we're in Hamburg for a special anniversary event in the harbour. So don't forget to subscribe and catch up with us again soon for our next adventures.